sure the holidays has been a bit restful for most of us. Amen. Can we please rise on our feet and just go around meet somebody and just tell them, the Lord loves you. <laughs> just say to them, the Lord loves you. Just tell them, meet, meet about five or seven people and just tell them, just go around meet somebody. It's always a beautiful thing to come before the gathering of the saints. So let's just, you know, go around, meet somebody and tell them the Lord loves you. If you're watching from your home, you can just tell your, 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 your family. Just let them hear those words. The Lord loves you. And I love you too. Please ensure you tell them that I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. Make sure, you know, and the love is not, love is an action word. It's not a noun. So you just, you have to, you know, show the love by either shaking or hugging somebody. Somebody might just need that hug today. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Let's just tell the Lord, I love you. Just go ahead and tell the Lord right now, I love you, Lord. 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 Just give him glory and give him praise. Just exalt him. Just bless his holy name. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new every morning. Come on, his mercies are new every morning. That means when you woke up this morning, his mercies are fresh. <laughs> new. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you. We are so grateful. We are so grateful, Lord. So grateful, Lord, for your goodness, your goodness, your faithfulness, your faithfulness, your, your mercies. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, we are so grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. You know, let me say something to somebody here. You see, it's funny because you must understand something that you see, God can never be angry with you. He can never be angry with you. You know, sometimes we always have this mindset that maybe God is annoying. God can never be annoyed with you. You know why? Because of Jesus. Because of which when he sees you, he sees you through the blood. Go ahead and just thank him. Just thank him. There is nothing you can do that can make his love for you stop. Nothing. Absolutely nothing you can do that can separate you from the love of God. Let's go ahead and bless him. Oh, we give you glory. Ah, because of his love that constrains you and makes you want to love him more. Father, we just thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you for your faithfulness and your mercies, oh God. We worship you. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. Just go ahead and sing a new song unto the Lord. Oh, sing a new song unto him. Oh, if you want to sing it in your own dialects, go ahead. Because you are here just to meet with the Lord. Oh, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Libre sutanda radiando suria. Engerebo sutanda brade cande rebi ando saria. Embelibro sutande brilliando sunda rabaha. Oriando shandere de mos candere into la brade. Mangraro sotore de insotore de ea. Manderiando shikandoro sota. Embali presonia andora da bo setere de. Engori ando sota libre de suta. Emborelando shipre de ando coso. In Gori and Sota Libre and Ariando Cosodere, Mandarade Suto Libre, Sitan de Brana, Macroriando Sanda Brade, Sitade, in Presavari, in Sopradiando Sodia, in Zorilando Sodere Bo Sadada, in Brando Sitan de Brilliando Cosodere, in Gladora and the Soto Libre, Sitara, in Belipre Sota Bradado Shadaboga, in Bonge de Ando Sindebre de Ingataba. In Gogiando Sota Brada, in Presodoria, in Golura Nana Sore, in Zabradeando Cosodia, in Zita Doro, Sita Baradia, Mandoro, Sita de Re, in Zorira Macassande de Rebosa, in Belipre Sota Libre de Catore de Isada, in Balipre Soto Libre de Gesende de Yenabacasa, in Jere de Bosa de Bahara, in Jesus' name. You see, every time you pray in an other tongues the Bible says you are speaking to God you are speaking it's a one line that can never go into any form of disturbance you are connecting with God directly 
And then Paul also went on to say that he that prayed in tongues thanks God very well. So when you're praying in tongues, you are thanking God as well. Glory be to God. If you pray in your, your dialect, you understand what you're saying. Even the enemy too does. But when you pray in tongues, he doesn't get what you are saying. Because the Bible says your spirit is praying. It's connecting with God. And when you are connecting with God, what happens is this. You conceive. You're going to conceive this morning. Go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Incredible in more in Sarana do Citeria, in Brelinda Catana Brando Cosundaria, in Gradiande Cesodorose, in Cadamando, second to Rianda Catea, in Bliendo Cofay and Ende Cesore, in Prozoran in Shenariando Cosode, in Toran and the Cassere and the Ronde Piana Casa, in Gorando Rano, second to the day, in Bredevenemo, in Brenea Marcatoria, in Belik and Tolado, Shendere and Cosoria, in Venia do Cosundarada, in Granora and the Casa. In Predere Mosa, in Belique de Entolandia Nemocotonere, Magavan de Predevocore, in Jetende de Bocone, in Zere Motorana Manzeria, in Brediano Cosodoron de Incaseria, in Belipre Catane Breno Cosoria, in Zarando Cosora de Bay, in Brelibre and Casada de Bosadara, in Crotore de Boco Sota Bradara, in Balibre Catanda Rono Cosendere, in Zerira Mocatora Barahanda de Mocosa, in Genta Brana Mocosondore, in Zerabo Sharaba. In Balipre que tal abran la catara, en Balire en Cosoto Brana, en Gevelendo Cosore en Gesedia, en Carabosa na Bacatande, en Dorando Cotore de Monte, en Cronorobosa anta la Brana Rande que se, en Gente Brene que Tore en Gesediendo Cotoa, en Gevele de Mococone, en Prede de Mococore, en Gente le Prequetanda Bronda, en Cavalande que tende Brenonde, en Sepre de Nemosa, en Barada Casada, en Zonde Prequetele de Nemonde, en Terea, en Jequetele Brondo. Cosora, in Veria and the Cassare, in Saran de Cateri, in Soto Labrana and Tolebrene Catea, in Sorene Mocosonda Branani and Mocosora, in Bariba and Aramo Sanda, in Shekarin de Catora, in Velipre Catalando Cosse, in Prolonosa in Tolabra, in Zolipre Catelebrena Otagara, in Jedende in Tolebrene Isadaba, in Baranda Cassore, in Cronamoco Sondebrene, in Jerende Cate, in Sande Catere Bruno Cosora, in Pran. In Boko Sonda Brenea, in Garana Macatanara, in Grenade Boko Sonda Brenea, in Shatala Branaca Sendere, in Soto La Brana de Etea, in Zetele Brene Etoda Namaha, in Belibra Cacande Eto Libre Icata, in Boron de Sita Brenda, in Savarana Bonde Cibrede, in Jeto Riba Atalabaya, in Calo Sedaria, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it, this is the refreshing. That causes the weary to rest. Whenever we actually engage in other tongues, what happens is that it brings a refreshing to your spirit. And there is, your antenna is sharp. Glory be to God. I sense in this house that there are people that need to deliver. There are people that need to give birth to certain things. And it's not a baby. <laughs> it's dreams. Dreams be beyond you. There are visions that are beyond you that you need to deliver. Visions beyond you. Now, if you think where you are, God has actually tried and got you to that place. There is more God has for you. At the age of 80, Moses still did many things. At the age of 80. So you are not yet old. God can still use you. But you must be birthed in the spirit. Are you with me? Now, when it comes to delivery, I have five minutes to do this. When it comes to delivery, there are what you call midwives. 
that stands with you and encourages you to push it to birth. Are you with me? Now you're going to hold somebody beside you. Maybe someone that actually agrees with you in the spirit or is a covenant partner that you can hold on to and say, agree with me. And as you are holding that individual, you are praying in tongues. And Lord, have your way. And you are saying, Father, bring to birth that dream you have placed in his heart, in her heart. Bring to birth that vision you have placed in my brother, in my sister. Lord, bring to birth. You're just praying in tongues. You are just praying in tongues. If you are watching online, go ahead and pray in the, in the spirit. In the spirit. In Bali Breke Soto Brede, in Zeta de Breke Toria, in Bazan de Getabre de Hira, in Bali Breke Sanda Bacata, in Balambra Casanda Breke Soya, in Bali Breke Sinta de Diende, in Zeketan de Getona Bacatea, in Zeta de Brenemosa, in Zen de Getara, in Baran de Gesita de, in Baden de Gesanda Bara, in Bali Breke Tona Maharia, in Ze Mashata Bara Materia, in Geli Breke Sonda Bracata, in Balan de Gesanda. Son of Iteria, in Zeta Libre Gatore, in Zalande in Zarea, in Zalande in Zarea, in Zalande in Zarea, in Pale Isaba, in Polarande Gasoya, in Zeri in Procotoya, in Zetende Gatoya, in Zilinda in Pali, in Palabacasoya, in Palamagasoria, in Zolondo Gotoa, in Zelipre Gato Lavahaya, you are praying for strength, hey, Sada, in Zeta Bedi, in Zadande Gatobale. In Balupa and Adea, in Balende Kesuda, in Palabarando Kosoya, in Jelende Ingara, in Libra Catona Bahaya, in Zea Bocotone Bele, in Zetelibra Catonia, in Jande in Patala Bracatoya, in Belendo Cosondo Roa, in Sota Libre Catoya, in Bebe de Gesora, in Jetinde in Pretoria, in Gelende de Sanara, in Calabarosa, in Palanerese, in Cerebro no Cosoria, in Gelipre Cataya, in Golondo Cosore, in Copa Libre Catona Baja, in Belipra Catola Bacata, in Jende Cate, in Balipra Casanta Bara, in Catipre Cosoya, in Zetinde de Tolande Cese, in Balande Cesina, in Cavale, in Sota. Pray, pray, pray. Libre que sea. En Bagaya. En Satan de que sea. Lord, have your way this morning. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Lord, have your way this morning. As you are holding that person in agreement. Lord, have your way this morning. Jesus, take your place. Lique de bosa. En se que tende que toya. En balaner gozone de ikata. We have two more minutes. Go ahead and pray. En pa libre que sea. En que libre que sorara. En se celebre in Tala, in Bradarande que se, in Colamano que son de Lira, in Barrande que se in de Lira, in Cabare, in Sotora, in Zalende que sea, in Protunda and the Casore, in Cabala Macatone Brede, in Jeta Libre que tona baja, in Palibre que soto Bredea, in Colas. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Glory. Whoosh, how do you feel? Oh my God, my God, there is something rumbling already. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and just give him thanks. Thank him for what he has already done. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you praise. We give you all the worship. We give you all adoration. Oh, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Whoo, glory be to God. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a shout. Please, you have a test. If you have a testimony, please, there'll be a pastor waiting for you at the multi-purpose hall. You can actually go and give your testimony there. Amen. God bless you. Glory be to God.
Oh, that is a confession. You will not be silent. Oh, you will not be silent. As long as you are breathing, you will not be silent. In the name of Jesus, you will preach the word of God. You will drink the word of God. You will meditate on the word of God. And you will not be silent. Thank you, Almighty Father. We worship and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Please, let's be seated. We have some testifiers this morning. And the first person I'll call briefly is Sister Chinaye. Can you please come forward one minute? Please encourage her, Sister Chinaye. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is my most happiest day. I want to thank God for adding another year to my year. And secondly, that um, beautiful ashes, I told God this month that God should give me a birthday gift. And I was among the first seven that came. And I thank God that this, this material, thank God for the life of Pastor Femi and his wife. God will bless them, provide more, and God will bless all those that came in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that testimony. Today is her birthday, and she's thanking God. Sister Bamidele, can you please come forward? Encourage her, please. Sister Bamidele. Praise the Lord. Please keep clapping until she gets here. Good morning, church. Good morning, pastors. Um, this testimony is long overdue. So... Um, before I got pregnant, I told God, before I got married, sorry, I told God that immediately I get married, I want to be pregnant. Because I'd had some um, surgeries in the past that, you know, I didn't want it to give me concern about childbearing. And God answered me, but the devil stuck and we lost the pregnancy. And after we lost the pregnancy, I started bleeding and we just lost it. And afterwards, my period ceased for, it happened in September, late August, September. And then throughout that year, I didn't see my period, and I was in so much pain. I went to the hospital several, several times. They did all kinds of tests. Nothing was found. I was in pains. My legs were swollen, were swollen, you know, but they didn't find anything. Miraculously, by itself, on the 1st of January, the next year, my period came back. That was two years ago. It just came up by itself. From service, I had to go home. I couldn't minister that day. And then we started trying again. But somehow it didn't happen. And I just told myself, I'm not going to bother myself again. Whenever God wants to do it, let him do it. Um, in July, my husband had an accident that almost took his life. The car was wrecked. Shortly after, I just noticed that I was getting tired, you know. I was feeling some pain. And I said, I was not going to do PT strip test. I was going to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital, and then they confirmed that I was pregnant. I and my husband, we went from rehearsal all that day, and they said we were pregnant. We were so excited. Two days after, the devil stuck again. I just woke up. I was at work. I started bleeding. I was bleeding so much. And I said, God, why? This can't happen to me again. And immediately I heard in my spirit, your baby is available. But I was still scared. I said, amen. I called my mother and I said, let's go to the hospital. I started bleeding again. When we got there, because I was in so much pain, it was as though something was trying to get out of my body. The doctor, as I was explaining, she said, madam, you miscarried this baby. I said, no, that is not what God told me. I'm going to carry this baby to them. And she said, okay, go and do scan. I went to do scan. I was bleeding. I was in pain. They did the scan. I was in the face of the radiologist. I saw the result, they said it was missed abortion, that there was no yolk in the egg, and there was nothing, else. There was nothing in my stomach. My, stomach my, my body is trying to reject the baby. I got to the hospital back, and they said, okay, so what, what do I want? To, should they evacuate or give me drugs to bring out the baby? I said, no. This is not my testimony. God told me I'm going to have this child, and I'm going to have it. And my pastor will always say that whose report will I believe? Is it the report of the doctors or the devil or the report of God? So I said, I'll go and seek a second opinion. She said, okay, no problem. When I know what I want to do, I should let them know. And they will call the guy in for me. So I called a friend of mine, a doctor, and she said, I should just calm down. I should come to this. For her, it's coming by herself. She did the scan, and she said, she can see a yolk inside the egg. Let's just allow you to be on bed rest for two weeks, and let's pray to God. There's nothing God cannot do. And I was on bed rest. I met a, a guy recommended a drug for me to be taken. And after two weeks, we went to do, do the scan again, and she saw a fetal pole. 
and she said, thank God. While she was scanning, she said, there's a fetal pole. It seems there's another one there, but let's just leave that one. Let's focus on the one that is alive. I said, no problem. I'm just glad that I have, I'm going to have my child. And she said, you're going to have to be on bed rest for the next three months. No, no, you can't do anything, anything at all. And I was on drugs, I was on bed rest. But while I was on bed rest, I had, I had a, a glimpse of what the woman with the issue of blood fit. I was bleeding seriously. If I laugh, I'll bleed. If I move, anything I do, I will bleed. In fact, I had to register in another private hospital, and they did not register me for antenatal because they said I'm going to lose the baby. That should just come so they can admit me, and then so that when I'm losing the baby, I will not bleed out completely. I said, no, that's not my testimony. Because the day I went there, I bled so much that on the streets that I had to, cl I had to clean myself in the hospital. The blood was so much. After three months, then I said I had internal bleeding, blah, blah, blah. After three months, I decided to go and register in Anike House. They started treating me properly. During the pregnancy, I developed hypertension, I developed diabetes, I developed everything that I could develop. The baby was not moving, she was breached. I just kept on to God's word that I'm going to come back with my testimony. Before I forget, while I was bleeding, I, had, I have a big sister. She told me that anytime you see blood, just tell yourself that the blood that is coming out is the blood you don't need in your body. That is what you should believe. And that's what I held on. I held on to that word. Every time I see blood, I say, this blood, I don't need you. My baby, you are, you are alive. And because of my fear, I will always do scan. I just want to hear her heart beat. Is she beating? Is she breathing? Is she fine? I did scan several times during this pregnancy. And when I was going to give birth, it was CS. I went to the hospital. Everything was going fine. Because I had a previous sensation from fibroids. The scar looked very clean on the outside, like there was nothing wrong. By the time they opened me up, I could hear the doctors complaining. Ah, what is here? What is this? Ah, um, our girl will be upset, so we shouldn't cut her again. They couldn't bring her from that, from that cut. Because from that previous um, surgery, I'd had adhesions that had um, blocked my organs down. And that was why she could not even move inside of me. They kept wondering, how did she even survive inside of her? And they had to cut me in a different place again to bring her out. I thank God that she's alive today. I'm carrying my baby. I did not have to evacuate. Praise After I gave birth to her, they tried. There was a lot of negligence. They almost lost my life and the life oh of my, my child. God. But I'm here today. She's going to be one on Saturday. And I've just come to give all glory Praise to God. The that Lord. Is that so. Praise the Lord. Whose report do you believe? Do you have a blind faith? Do you believe in the word of God? When he says, do you hold it? The Bible says, I remembered when we were doing our fellowship yesterday. He says, if you can believe just like a child, a child that does not complain. If you tell your child, I'm going to give you ice cream, she's ready. Whether you have money in your pocket, she doesn't want to know. Because you promised her, she's expectant. And the Lord has promised and said, it will come out. You will deliver. So what report do you believe? What do you say concerning your situation? Our God is a good God. Do you know he never lies? Oh, he never lies. Whatever he says he's going to do, that is what he does. Praise the Lord. Sister Olubumi Abu, Abudu, please come forward. While brother Sunday Mwabweze be on standby. Please encourage her while she comes forward. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, pastors. Uh, uh, when they announced the, the, the word explosion, I, I was so excited, but I said, God, Holy Spirit, you have to help me to come. Because me, I want to come throughout. But financially, I, I know I am boy, and I would just say, Holy Spirit, you will help me to come. Holy Spirit, you will help me to come. So after church service on Sunday, I wanted to follow the church bus going to uh, Beggar. So I was the last person to come in. To go, I was the last person. Later, somebody came and said, she is going to Arepo. And I said, me, I'm going to get to Arepo. I can still follow Ikorodu bus. So I now okay. come down and let her in. So while waiting for people to get ready for us to be going to Ikorodu, so while we are, I was standing, a lady just came. Even I cannot recognize her. I just said, Mama, this is for you. She just handed me an envelope. I was so surprised. On Sunday, our pastor preached that sometimes we may be delayed. And it seems as if God is not there. God has forgotten us. That delay cost me a laughter. Now I come to bless the Amen. name of the living God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise God. Her attitude made way for her. She didn't have to come out. But her attitude, her character 
made way for her. Praise the Lord. Sister Moji Bokno, can you please come forward? Our God is a good God. He sees each and every one of us. I've already called Brother Sunday. You are supposed to be Brother Sunday one boise. Yes. And then Sister Moji is after Brother Sunday. Encourage him, please. Encourage him. Encourage him. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. I want to thank my life. I've been to a gang 2022. So I got there, my life into debt. I didn't know. So 2022, I joined a gang. So you are doing a lot of things, stealing. So let me go the story short. My, my two friends were shot, and one died. One collected a bullet in his leg. So after everything, all of them was, I guess, all of them is in prison now, but I'm still alive. I want to thank God for everything Praise I've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank Praise you, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God loves you, Brother Sunday, and he wants to save you. I told him he has to surrender his life to Christ because God is the one protecting him. Praise the Lord. Sister Muji, please come forward. Good morning, Pastor Jay. Good morning, pastors. Good morning, all. Today is my birthday. So I, want to give, I want to give God all the glory. I want to thank him for life, for protection, for good health. I was out one time concerning my BP. But today I want to thank God because for like one week, I didn't take any drug. And my BP is stable up till this Amen. morning. So I just want to give glory to God for his life in my life and protection. Thank Amen. you, God. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that permanent healing. Sister Faith Ode, please come forward. Why, brother? Abiodun Ojelabi. Sister, is it brother? Sister Faith Ode, one minute quickly, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for his goodness over my life. Two Thursdays ago, after the service, only I got to shop and I found out that they broke into my shop. I'm a baker, I bake cake, and I do small chops. They broke into my shop. They took everything, all my baking equipment. And while in the service here, Pastor Tolu was pleading the blood of Jesus over our life and everything. Immediately I got there, I just said the blood of Jesus. And I remembered my promise I took for the year was everything is going to work together for my good. And I told God that this thing they did, turn it around for my rising. I'm here to give God all the glory. Little by little, I'm getting back my things Amen. to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Biodun Ojelabi, please encourage her. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, everybody. My name is Abiyadu Ojelabi. 2014, I stopped, going, I stopped coming to church because of distance and the marriage, because my husband is, is a Muslim guy. So, after our wedding, I got pregnant, but I lost the baby after nine months because of the prolonged labor. So, I came to church. After that pregnancy, after three years, I conceived again. After four months, I lost the baby again. So, turn on uh, 22. I came to church, Thursday shower. So, I met with Pastor, Pastor Tayo Dukoya. And he said to me, turn uh, 21, he said, he prophesied that, go on, go, my testimony is permanent. I claim it. So, the glory of God, turn uh, on 21, June, I conceived again. So, after all those stress, I went to, to see a gynecologist. He asked me to come back for sacrilege after 20 weeks. On that day, the nurses forgot to remove the pad. So I was feeling pains under my pelvic. So I was bed rest for, for five days. On the fourth day, I was asked to do scanning body. But before then, the gynecologist asked me to go and urinate. I was went to the toilet. I felt something other than my pelvic. 
Immediately, I felt something. I come out of, I come out. As I went to the toilet again, I thought it was blood or the baby. So I ran, I ran back without winning this. So I ran to, sorry. I ran to the sky room and was told the baby is okay. So I called the nurse to tell, to tell her that something was coming out of my body. She said, though, and behold, it was the part that they forgot to remove. So after the nine months, I gave birth to a baby boy. They clocked two years last month. Amen. Praise the Lord. My second testimony is my husband. So last month, I called him. He went to, he went to, the, he went to work. So I, come, I called him in the night. I say, please help us to buy something when you are coming. And he said, it's okay. But later, I did not come back on time. So I, want, I waited and waited till I slept off. Before then, I called his number, but it's not, it's not, it's not going. So I woke up the next day, but could not find him at home. So we came to church. So I became worried. So later I called, I called his number, but it was off. I did not know if he had an accident. I had a lower side down on the boat, on that beach. So the person that drove the car, his friend, that one, the, the man, the two legs were cut off. So my husband was okay. So they rushed them to the uh, emergency at seven up. But the, uh, they, went, they, went, they took them to the emergency. But my husband was okay. But the other man, they transferred him to Bobby to cut his leg. I just want to bless God for my husband's life. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our protector. Lord, we appreciate you. For all these testimonies, Almighty God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for always being there for your children. Lord, we appreciate you. We worship and will bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So while we are preparing our offering, the instrumentalist will give us a wonderful special number. Our offering, blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. We give it cheerfully in the mighty name of Jesus. And we decree and declare open doors in Jesus' name. Thank you, almighty Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Good morning, church. Good morning, pastors. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have lost, we serve God that can give you double. Just believe in Him. He's a word. No water like you. I worship you. Oh, can me I worship you. I worship you. Oh, can me I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, my father. Hey, oh, can me I worship I worship you. I worship. What can me you say? What can me? I worship you.
say, okay, Mary, celebrate Jesus. Sing to your Father. Know that you can never go home the same way you came. Yeah. Let him hear your voice. You're not here for any man. You are here for him. Let him hear your voice. Okay, Mary, say, face that challenge. Tell that challenge that you serve a God that is able to do more than you can ever expect or imagine. I worship you. One more time. Okay, Mary, no. Let's go. Show your camera. what you have lost you serve a God that can give you double yes. God bless you in the name of Jesus Amen. put your hands together celebrate Jesus his word thank you church have a reason to worship him just lift up your voice and begin to worship Lift up your voices and begin to worship. Worship your holy name. You are all. Worship your holy name. So you must.
might be here and you might feel like you have, you don't have a reason to worship. Sometimes the devil, you know, I, I said this before, that the devil is not as powerful as we make him. Um, and all he has is the power of suggestion. He can suggest, <laughs> um, but it's left to you to take it, right? Um, if I had, if I told Pastor Tony and I said to him, slap yourself, slap yourself, slap yourself, slap yourself, slap yourself, slap yourself, slap yourself. I can say it multiple times, but until he takes his hand to slap himself, no slap will happen. But I can be in his ear telling him to slap himself, slap himself. You want to slap yourself. You know you want to slap yourself. No matter how much I say it, until he listens to me and accepts that information, then he takes his hand to slap himself. No slap will occur. And that is what happens with the devil is he comes with the word of suggestion or power of suggestion to the point that he puts pressure on you to make you feel like what he's suggesting is actually the reality of the situation. And a lot of times we succumb to the pressure and he makes us feel like we are in positions that we actually are not. I saw an illustration, it's if I go around picking bags, if I pick Pastor Lara's bag or Pastor Tino's bag or Pastor Tosi's bag, like they're picking every bags. I can carry a bunch of bags, and the more I carry it, the heavier it becomes. But none of the bags belong to me. And that is what the devil does. He will bring different words to put pressure on you, to make you feel heavy. But the fact of the matter, it does not belong to you. And it's important that we are able to differentiate or to separate the bags that the devil is throwing at us that the bags are actually ours. So I say all that to say, you can be here and you can feel the pressure of the words that the devil is throwing at you and whispers in your ears and says, you really don't have a reason to worship. Why are you worshiping? What good has happened in your life? After all, this is not where you thought you would be. After all, you thought you'd be so much further, but look at you. That's all the words of suggestion. After all, you have nothing to show for it. And the more he begins to whisper into your ears, if you allow his suggestions to take root in your life, then you begin to say, oh, okay, after all, it's true, it's true. <laughs> Woe is me. <laughs> Look at me. But the truth of the situation is, first of all, the Bible says, let God be true and every man be a liar. Anything that is not God is a lie. Any suggestion, any report that is not God is a lie. Allow the truth of God become so real in your life that every other thing fades away. Let God be true. How do you let God be true? God is already true. So align with his word to see the truth come true in your life. Let God be true and every other man be a liar. The fact of the matter is the fact that you are here, living, breathing, is a testimony of God's goodness. Because left to the devil, you would not be here today. He wanted to take you out a long time ago. Things may not look the way you wanted it to be, your plan might not have gone according to plan, but you are still here. You're here. And if you are here, and you are alive, that means he is not through with you yet. And it's so easy to get caught up in the things that we are going through in life. Woe is me, it's only me. Oh, look at me. Oh, feel bad for me, 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 me. 
but until you take a step back. It's so easy to be caught up in all the things that we don't have, what we've not achieved, that we don't see the milestones and the blessings and all the things God has brought us from and where he's taken us to. You may not be where you want to be, but you definitely are not where you used to be. Remember when we were talking about mercy, I said, sometimes your scars are indications of mercy. Because if you focus on all the scars that you've taken, then you don't realize that sometimes your scars are indications of mercy. Because if you have scars, that means your body's still working. That means it's doing what it's supposed to do. That means that thing that was supposed to be deadly did not take you out and you have something to remind you of what God has brought you from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why, why should I worship? That you can open your mouth to ask why is why you should worship. <laughs> that you can sit and formulate thoughts in your mind and say, why, why? That you can lift your hands and say, why? <laughs> Is why you should worship. So if you're asking yourself, why? And you know, sometimes it takes you hearing other people's stories to humble you. Then you know, say bad past bad. <laughs> As bad as you say your own bad, you know, reach bad. There are different levels to bad. You look around and you hear stories, people losing their lives, accidents here, accidents there. But yet, you got into your car and you drove. And you're here. You went to sleep last night and you woke up. And you're here. Your heart has not given out on you yet. Bad as it bad, economy bad, but somehow you see the chop, sha. For those, um, for those who are, what's the word I'm looking for? Who are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How do I say this? Who are proper, who, you know, are of the English, um, what's the word? It's the word is not coming. See, even my English chef. Ingl thank you, of proper orientation. Thank you, sir. You know, I said, as bad as the economy is, you're still finding ways to eat. You're still eating, right? Somehow, Nigeria is happening, but God is happening too. <laughs> Somehow, you know. <laughs> you know, we talk about the resilience of Nigerians because at the end of the day, you know, Fikilo Sha. All right, so, so remember the uproar when we heard about petrol going from overnight, 98, or to 160 something. And everybody said, like, hey, 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 hey. And then diesel went from, I don't even know what it was, 800, 6, 350 then. Now it's 1, 2, 150, 200, now 800, 1,000, 2, 1, 6 now. Dollar is just flying. Dollar is just lip pounds, they go jump anywhere they want to go, just be going. Now it's come, but even the comeback is what, one, two. Well, at least one, one is comeback. Now we're celebrating one, one. Before, it used to be 150. But last, last, it is even affecting the price of Google and Ekba on the road. For those who don't know what that is, peanuts and popcorn. You know? You go and buy Indomie, sex, everything. You know, ah, this thing is like, ah, dollar don't go up. Oh. And at the reason, I'm like, wait, hold on. How is dollar affecting? But everywhere you look, things, then the, the government's like, you know what? Let's just see how much more we can. Let's increase the tariff of electricity. Let's just increase that too. Just, and he's like, wait, really? Somebody say, but God. Not that we will not complain, 
But somehow, money will come to pay that bill. And then you might go back to zero and say, ha, ah, but before you need, again, somehow. You know, I strongly believe that God, why did manna come daily? They would have just enough to eat and they could not store it because they tried to store it, it would go bad because he was teaching them to rely on the fact that God was their source. Not man, not your intellect, not your ability to save. I'm not saying saving is bad, <laughs> but it's not your salary, it's not nothing. It's literally each new day, what I need. And then you understand the importance of our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day. The problem is, we are so worried about tomorrow. Just give us this day. Let tomorrow come. When tomorrow comes, give us this day. When next tomorrow comes, give us this day. Don't worry about tomorrow. He says, let tomorrow worry about itself. Why are you giving yourself headache over tomorrow's problem? Why? Which one of us can add a breath to our life by worrying? If we could, let us, let us, in fact, we'll do worry night vigil. All of us, well, starting to worry from, everybody come. Take your section, take your section, let's do night shift. If worrying produces results, let's all worry. Why do you think God wrote in his word? Do not worry. Because he knew we have a propensity to worry. That's why he put it there. Do not worry about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink because your heavenly father knows you have need of these things. Look at the birds of the air or the, be the, the beasts of the field. They do not worry. They don't worry. Bingo doesn't worry. Bingo does not worry. That local dog on the street does not worry. And I say many times, I have dogs. I know what you do. Vets, shots, this, that's for you. Bingo has no owner. As far as Bingo is concerned, all of us are his owners. Anywhere there is road is my domain. Anywhere there is food, I will eat. Bingo is hungry, he'll walk to a stranger, sees them eating gala, just look at him like this. Stupid dog, shah, they'll shah throw small towards him. Stray cats. Somehow I have cats in my house. Don't ask me how I have cats. Now I have cats. That's a, that's a, no, they're good cats. Not, <laughs> not evil cats. Cats are not all, all these God made are good. <laughs> And Jesus said, cat, burn them in the name of Jesus. Calm down. Where did it come from that cats are evil? See that cat? Especially if they are black, just know that. It has finished for that cat. But I have cats. They give birth to cats. And now I got like six cats in my house. How are they surviving? Because I don't be feeding them like that only when I remember. Because uh, like cats, because cats take care of themselves. They're very, they're, well, they're kind of the best pets to have because they're not dependent on you like that. They clean themselves, they bathe themselves, they're clean, they're tidy. Dogs are like children. Cats are like adults, just, so they're actually quite cool to have. But somehow, they eat. And you, who was made in the image and likeness of God, How? It is not your business to know how. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest 
upon his promise. Just to know the saints, the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove you all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh. Sir, I've suffered loss. How I trust you. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, trust happens when you don't understand. That's what faith is. Not when you understand, because that's insurance. Faith is, it doesn't make sense, but I trust you regardless. Oh, for grace to trust in more. But God, why would you allow this to happen to me? Why do you think it's about you? Now, I know that that statement sounds like an oxymoron. What do you mean, why do you think it's about me? It happened to me. But why do you think it's about you? Could it be that God could trust you with that level of pain because he knew that you would be the catalyst or the inspiration or the encouragement for many that will come down the line, that will look at your life as a template of all the things that you have gone through and are yet still standing. And then they say to themselves, if he can go through it and he didn't take and he didn't die. If he could go through it and he's still standing, then I can stand too. Because listen, it's not everyone that God can trust with the badge of pain. If you have suffered loss in your life, you wear the badge of pain. And that means God can trust you. Oh, we don't want to have that conversation. You don't go to people that you feel can't handle it. When you are in trouble, when there is pain, it's not everybody you go to. The good times is for everybody. The celebration, the laughter, the joy is easy. But pain is reserved for a certain few. There's certain people that you only call to cry to. You can't cry to everybody. They will cry with you. They will hold your hand, but you keep on walking. God said about Job, have you seen my servant Job? He said, take everything, but he will not curse me. Don't touch his life. Because he could trust him with that level of pain. Because God knew that it was not about the things that he had done for him, but he had a relationship with him. And he knew that this one is not about what he can get from me because he knows who I am to him. So everything else can go. David said, cast me not away from your presence. Take You can take everything away, but not the Holy Spirit. The joy of his salvation is tied to the presence. Cast me not away. Take anything away, but not your Holy Spirit. Because as long as I'm connected to you and I have you, I have everything. It doesn't matter what I lose in this life. To live is Christ and to die is gain. If God has allowed you to go through a series of loss and pain in your life, it's because he can trust you with it. 
And so you can become an encouragement for somebody else. If we could take a survey of the people standing in this room and we compare our pain stories, some of us would be humble. Tell me your story. What's your story? I heard of the lady I was at the back. Oh, I had a nine months. I lost the baby. Then I did it again. I lost the baby again. For some of us, one loss is just too much. But now she stands with her child, and now it becomes a testimony because it's encouraging to you. Because of the privilege of my position, I get to hear of stories. And when I see the resilience, the strength, it encourages me. I look around and I see one of our ushers and I remember when she lost her daughter. See when you come when she lost her sister. Tough. Not planned, but they're here. Let you know another one. Not because I'm just telling you that the people standing beside you, around you, have scars of pain, but they know that God is still good. God is still good. I'll let you know another one. Not because I'm trying to glorify man, but I'm trying to get you to understand. Look beyond your pain. Look beyond what you feel is bad. And keep your eyes on Jesus. Because he is the one that makes all things beautiful in his time. And where you are is not where you will always be. And whatever you are dealing with, this too shall pass. We all have stories. And the fact that we don't look like what we've been through is in itself a testimony. Some of us will cry, clean our eye, come out and jump. And you don't know that, right? As they are jumping, two minutes ago, though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Where's Moses? Moses. Where's Moses? So, Moses. See Moses. Look at him running. Look, look, look. Turn around. See, see him running. Come, Moses. Moses. You saw Moses just led worship. Or was it last Sunday you were on stage too? I think you, you do. You sing with the worship team. And he was part of the production. Well, you see him was running around setting things up. Easter production was Sunday. Moses lost his first son on Thursday. Uh, last th two Thursdays ago? Yeah. His first son. He was in rehearsal on Saturday. He was in production on Sunday. Called Moses. Moses was running. Moses just did, just led worship. Now, if I didn't tell you, you would never know. Isn't this a walking testimony? He didn't know I was going to do this today. I had no conversation with him about it. And I stood back there watching him worship, and I thought to myself, it's funny. I said, oh, this is what they mean when they call me an inspiration. I always used to wonder, I said, ah, he's such an inspiring. What's inspiring about me? I'm just living life. But as I began to watch him, and I'm like, 
I know his story. He just lost his son. But yet he's on stage worshiping and you would have no idea. He has, his gait has not changed. His energy has not dropped. His willingness to serve has not reduced. He has not cursed God and died. He has not said, Moses, how long have you been in this church for? Almost 29 years. When did you start serving in sound? Which was what, 2004, 5? 2002. Now, if anybody should bear a grudge and say, God, I have died everything I don't do. I saw you choose to repay me. The Bible says that when Job lost everything, everything, you know what his response was? He fell on his knees and worshipped. See that he was having a nervous breakdown. But he understood something about God that we were yet to catch on to. So why should I praise him? What reason do I have to praise him? That you are still here is risen enough. I just want to appreciate you, Moses. You are indeed a representation of strength and resilience and faithfulness. I watched him. I, I, it happened on Thursday. I called him on Thursday. Friday, he wasn't there, understandably. And I thought, if he said, I can't be around, I was like, great. That's understandable. He's back. Serving. Doing things for production, connecting things. And even me, I was like, if you could leave Moses, oh, just leave him. That's the case. Are you okay, Pastor? I'm okay. I'm good. Right back into it. Right back into it. And the Lord will reward you. Amen. The Lord will repay you. The Lord will strengthen you. Amen. He will give you double. Amen. The Bible says that when God would restore everything to Job, he gave him double than what he lost. The Lord will so bless you that he will wipe away the pain that you felt from the loss. And he will continue to make your life an inspiration. And you will begin to continue, you will continue to see evidence that God's hand is on your life. What will take others out? You know, when the devil fires his best shot and it fails, what he doesn't know, he has created a fearless human being. When they do the worst and you are still standing, what now, devil? What is it that you want to throw at me now? And the Lord will continue to make you like an arrow in the hands of the Almighty. And you shall continue to win souls by your life, by your strength to the work of the Lord and your faithfulness to his kingdom. And as you continue to build the house of the Lord, the Lord will raise men to build your house. In the name of Jesus, he will satisfy your mouth with good things. In Jesus' name. God bless you, sir. So, with these few words of mine, I hope I'll be able to convince you and not confuse you as to why 
You should worship God. Amen. There's a song. What song do I have in my mind? You are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords. You are worthy.
someone here, God is restoring the joy of your salvation. That's been your prayer. Restore the joy of my salvation. Restore the joy of my salvation. Restore the joy of my salvation. Happiness comes from the outside. Joy comes from the inside. Joy is not contending on what's happening around you or beside you. It comes from the well of salvation that you can draw from internally. So this is very weird. I'm not going to ask the person to come out, and I can't see. So it's weird. I, God gives me impressions sometimes, and it's like somebody. You know how you hear about people who they go before God and they strip themselves naked, right? Like today, not today. Have you ever heard? And they're going through something. It's like, Lord, they come bare. It's like, this is the same way you birthed me or I came out. I stand before you completely naked. And they take their clothes off. And the Lord just was telling me that someone did that. Might have been last night or early this morning. But they stripped themselves naked. And it's like, God, there's nobody here but you and I. If you are who you say you are, if you are who you say you are, and you actually see and hear, prove to me that you can hear me. And they made a prayer, and they stripped themselves naked before God. stage just said to God, God, give me a sign. Let Pastor Jay mention this. Well, there's your sign. Well, there's your sign. Well, there's your sign. There's your sign. Elroy, he sees. Elroy, he sees. Elroy, he sees. Now, I wasn't in your room. <laughs> and you had this call. This many people did this last night, this morning? Well, this is the sign you needed. God sees. God hears. God knows. And some of you were not sure if you were screaming to an empty room. But you said, God, show me if you are real. And you made the prayer. So this is God letting you know. 
that he heard. He sees and he knows. And he is not a man that he should lie. If he has said it, will he not do it? If he has spoken it, will he not bring it to pass? Father, we stand in faith with all these ones standing here. And we don't know the prayers, but you do. But Father, as you have given them this sign, they themselves will become signs. Their testimonies will become signs. In the name of Jesus. How you will do it, man will not be able to take the glory. In the name of Jesus. In this month of supernatural delivery, we ask, oh God, that the lines fall for them in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because these ones will have a testimony. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. You may go back to your seats. We have a God who sees. We have a God who hears. And we have a God who knows. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. So, I got about 15 minutes. We can do a lot in 15 minutes. A lot can happen in 15 minutes. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it says five minutes. Wait now. Why was it five minutes? Dude, what time does showers close? 11 o'clock. Eh. So, preach for 10. Then do. But I have an announcement, so you have to add five more. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Anyway, so ushers, do you have do you have the um, invites for the ushers have them? So all the ushers have them, correct? No, no, it's at the back. Okay, so how are they supposed to get it? It's at the back. So at the back where? In the reception? With ushers in the back. Okay, so it's there. Okay, so. So what we've done, we have printed, these are our invites for what explosion coming up. And you know the story of how the four lepers were outside and they found a lot of good food and they ate and they were full and they said to themselves, this is wickedness. There are people that don't have let us go and tell them. It is the same way. All of you are not lepers. Though. Yes, people are not lepers. You'll never be lepers in Jesus' name. Amen. But it is the same way that we have a mandate to share with everyone what is about to happen in church this week. Let me strongly advise. This is not a week. If you miss any week in church, it's not this week. Because your life can change with one word. One word. One word can change your whole life. And nothing just happens. So here's what we're asking for everyone here to do today. On your way out, or... Because that might be a lot. Huh? Wouldn't they be go slow going out? It'd be, or would it be quick? Because it would be a thing. You just pass it out. Ushers, please begin to share them. What we want is everyone to take 10. We have plenty, Abby. Don't give one, no. Give 10. 10. 10. 10. Now, if you collect this 10 and use it as coaster in your house, if you use it as fan, or is it five? Are we doing five or 10? No, five. Okay, five. You people don't know 10 people need? We'll do five. Please give them five. I don't trust some people that, ah, okay, oh, fan. <laughs> this is not fun. Give them five each. And what we want is for you to give five people. Give five, don't keep it in your house. Give five people so they can invite, so you're inviting them for word explosion 
this week. It starts on Sunday. Amen? It starts on Sunday, not Monday, Sunday. 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 I mean, look at this lineup. Can you put this up on the screen, please? Put it on the screen. What explosion. Casey. <laughs> People know Casey online. Casey. Casey. Is Casey upstairs? Thank you. Please, you people, just, just, please appreciate the worship. I appreciate it. Thank you. We're not chasing away. We just, we love you. I appreciate them as they go to their seats. God bless you. Is it too? So, look at the lineup. This lineup is not beans. It's not, it's not beans. Who came up with that is not beans statement? So what is it? So it's everything else. So it's beans like bad. Beans is good. It's not like biscuits. Is that better? But amazing speakers and they have the word. Amen? They have the word. You know, the good thing about being in the kingdom is you know that you've been called. Because in the world, if they were to charge, if you were to pay to hear these people speak, it would be plenty money. But as they are of God, they are serving the Lord. So it's free for you people. Say Somebody say free. Registration is, but you see, everything that is free, that means somebody has paid. <laughs> but don't abuse it because it's free. So please take five, pass it, I mean, give five people, invite them personally to be part of what explosion. On Sunday, we will give church as well. Everybody mobilize. What the explosion is here, amen? amen? Let Lagos know that something is happening. Amen? And you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. It's very nice. I, this thing, you see how nice this thing is? Hello? Can you see that this cardboard? How many people spend money on? See this thing? We didn't even do paper flyer. We did fill it. This stock paper. This not um, news, um, Google and Equa paper. This, um, what's this paper called, please? Eh? That thing, Mark, yeah, eh. Yeah. It never has nice gloss finish. Please, if you use this thing in your house as coaster, God is watching you. My God is watching you. Amen? But please take five, share it, and, um, we know that this week is going to be an exciting week, amen? And please feel free to share it on social media. Put it on your WhatsApp. Let's disturb Lagos, Nigeria. Let's disturb them. Amen? Everywhere. What explosion? What explosion? How many people have seen our billboards on the going around anywhere? It's good. It's there. But we need to make more noise. Amen? So make sure you um, share it. Amen? Okay. I think, so let me do, I don't know what we'll call it, 10 minute short word. <laughs> 10 minute shorts, amen? How many believe that I can do it in 10 minutes? If you believe, if you have faith, say amen. amen. Come on, what God cannot do. <laughs> don't stop it. <laughs> because they say so they don't do that. What God cannot do does not exist. Please, wow. Well, God can do all things, amen? All right, let's do it, 10 minutes. Open your Bibles real quick to Luke 1. Luke 1, we have been talking about, it's a month of supernatural delivery, right? Now, we know the story of Luke 1. It's, it's interesting that um, a lot of times, it's, I feel like Mary doesn't get enough, enough attention in the Bible. Well, well, let me not say not enough attention. Well, in should I say, not Pentecostalism or not Christendom, what I want to say, because in Catholicism, she gets a lot of attention. But in, what's the word, in charismatic, we don't, she doesn't get a lot of attention. You know, only around Christmas time. Because that's not fair. Mary's a real G. She's a real MVP. You know, we don't pray to her or anything like that, but she doesn't get enough attention. Mary is the mother of Jesus. 
And in Luke 1, we talk, it talks about how she's living her life, fantastic, all well and good, and then she gets interrupted by an angel who brings the word of God concerning her for that season. News flash, the, word of God, the call of God will disrupt your plans. Write it down. <laughs> the call of God will disrupt your plans. You can lay out your life in a pretty, uh, what's that thing called? Something board. Vision board, mood board, design it, put pictures, it could be fantastic. The call of God will disrupt your plans. Do you know how I know it always disrupts your plans? Because it's not God's plans, it's your plans. And anything that is your plan and is not God's plan, when God comes, there'll always be a disruption. Living her life, so great. The angel comes, shows up. Hey, blessed are you amongst women. We know the story. You shall conceive, you shall bear a child. The Holy Spirit will come aboard you, <laughs> and you name him Jesus. Hold up. This was not the plan. You know I'm a virgin, right? These things don't happen without a man. How will this happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. You conceive. And the Bible says in Luke 1, 38, she says, Let it be unto me according to your word. But what was interesting is I want to pull out very quickly that while he was saying this to her, the angel, in verse 36, he says, And listen, even your relative, Elizabeth, has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. Now, when I spoke about this during Christmas, it was interesting. I said, you know, sometimes God will take you through a process because he's trying to use you as a sign for somebody else. And he, we've made Elizabeth a reference point. I said, listen, the one that was known as barren, he kept, Elizabeth was barren all this while, but she took in right before, six months before, because she had to be a reference point for Mary. Because what God was going to do with her was supernatural, so he had to do something else with somebody else and say, listen, if I've done it for Elizabeth in her old age, then trust me, this is not impossible for me to do too. Now, most importantly, after that was done, the Bible says once she was done, she got up and she went to Elizabeth's house. Go to verse 39. It says she went to Elizabeth's house and... 40, she entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard her Mary's greetings, her baby leaped. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by him. And she exclaimed loudly, blessed, worthy to be praised are you amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. But how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed, spiritually fortunate, are favored by God is she who believed and confidently trusted that there would be a fulfillment of the things that were spoken to her by the angel sent from the Lord. Now she walks in and all of a sudden, Elizabeth goes into this whole monologue. Blessed and favored, how is it that the mother of my Lord will come to me now? Elizabeth was not there when this happened, but she's telling her word for word her experience. Blessed and favored are you, how is it that the mother of our Lord will come to me? And you that's agreed with the words of the angel... It would seem, we know she was overcome by the Holy Spirit, but it was clear that in this process, Mary's journey and Elizabeth's journey were joined. They were connected, right? And it would seem.